Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Let's talk about Ian. I got to focus on Florida first and then we'll talk about the rain heading to the Carolinas next. Let's get right to it though and show you where the system is today. You can see it a well-defined eye. This cold front though is key for the Carolinas. Everyone asks, you know, what is the deal with the Carolinas? This front is going to be a big part of this because you see the moisture forming out ahead of it. That is eventually what's going to be heading our way going into the weekend. Let's go down to Cuba right now. I'm going to stop this. You can see the radar is rather impressive. Let me turn the radar off and you can see the center. The eye is about to emerge off the north coast of Cuba. This is intensified even over land kind of expected. That's what you typically see over the western part of Cuba. The land there is very flat. It's over more water than land. So it's not having as big an impact as you would imagine. Plus the upper level environment is favorable for this to continue to strengthen. The real concern is this moves northeast is the soaking rains ahead of it are going to saturate what is already pretty wet ground over Florida and we're going to see a whole lot of fresh water flooding and then combine that with the storm surge coming in the water can't run off the Florida panhandle and the, um, the peninsula excuse me and that allows for heavy rain to just back up and cause all kinds of flooding issues so let me put the track on here real quickly and show you the current tracks this is the current track. We'll be getting a new update here shortly, but I can already tell you where the track's basically going to be. Um, you can see the movement a little bit south and east of Tampa. Anywhere from Tampa to Fort Myers really needs to be ready. And then it takes this little wobble back towards the northwest and then up into the Carolinas is a remnant low or a tropical depression. Probably doesn't really matter what it is. Just a whole bunch of rain is going to be heading to the north. The reason that little wobble happens, everything slows down in the atmosphere and this thing starts to get bogged down. You can see the trough here over the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. That is what's eventually going to pull this north. But what happens is this moves out. This uh, magnet, which is drawing it north, is going to go like this and high pressure is going to build back in all the way back into this direction. It's going to get trapped down here and it's going to cause it to get stuck for a couple of days. And that's going to cause it to kind of sit there. When you look at the super ensembles, all of the guidance together, you could see that little wiggle back to the west and then it kind of meanders around Georgia, South Carolina, maybe North Carolina, and then eventually moves out. But there's a big spread there because of the slower movement of the system. So let's get right into what's happening in Florida because this is going to be a huge flood risk. The, the, the storm surge potential is huge south of Tampa down to Fort Myers. So this Port Charlotte area, Venice, um, these areas are going to see a, a lot of water. But I do want to mention there will be a lot of water on the east side of Florida and Georgia because remember, the circulation around this is, is likely going to be broad. We've got high pressure to the north. So there's going to be winds from the high pressure and winds from the low pressure that is in. So there will be high water, um, above average tides, coastal flooding possible. So a little bit of surge possible on the other side of Florida, Georgia, and even parts of South Carolina. Let me show you the maximum water inundation because I think this is a really good way to look at where water will be above ground. You can see starting down to the south um, from Marco Island, Cape Coral area, Fort Myers Beach, that's a lot of water. Then around Port Charlotte, that's really big water coming into Port Charlotte. And then going up towards Sarasota, you've got some water on the barrier islands, especially Tampa Bay. If this shifts a little bit to your south, like it looks like it will, that actually could deter the overall um, potential there, but still got to watch it. And not as much on the South Carolina, Georgia coast as it moves north. So where is this thing going with the next update? Let me show you. So the hurricane hunters are out there right now. Um, I got a couple plots. The white plots are the actual forecast. The blue plots are going to be, I think, the H wharf, and then the green is the GFS. Let me turn off the GFS and the H wharf. You see these red plots? That's the consensus track. That is where you take all of the guidance, the good stuff, the guidance, and blend it together for a forecast. And anytime you see that shift. I would expect that the hurricane center, they follow very closely to this and for good reason because it does the best job. I think you're going to see a little shift like this in the track. So just a little bit further south and east of Tampa, which again, Port Charlotte area, um, that area, Cape Coral, Naples, down towards Fort Myers, that's going to be the part that gets hit. And then you see it move north and you see how it meanders over the western Carolinas. That's where we start to see all of that moisture kind of pile up there. And that's where we start to see issues. So let's look at that setup for, for rainfall in the Carolinas. All right, let's get right to the rainfall for the Carolinas. So you see the front that's attached to this. This is this long line of clouds and showers that are ahead of it. And you see the system. This is what's going to get active. High pressure up here is going to develop. We've got the front. So moisture is getting pulled from the south, this deep tropical moisture. 
cool dry air from the north is keeping this front active. So this front becomes a big driver of the wet weather moving into the Carolinas. So we'll go through today, obviously no issues, beautiful weather. We'll go through tomorrow. We'll get into Thursday. I'm gonna stop this Thursday afternoon. So Thursday afternoon, this is 5 p.m. We've got that big high pressure. You could see it actually up here. It looks really nice, a really nice cool Canadian high pressure system sitting right here, but that is helping to supply this strong easterly flow. That's actually picking up some moisture. The front is stalled right in here, and then the deep tropical moisture associated obviously with Ian coming north. So that's kind of the setup. That squeeze play is going to produce a lot of rain. So we go into 11 p.m. Thursday night. We get into uh, Saturday morning, excuse me, and here comes the rainfall really starting to crank up as we go into Saturday. I mean, this is going to be some really heavy bands of rain into the afternoon, go to Saturday night, go through Saturday into Sunday. Now we're in Sunday morning. The rain's a little bit more scattered. So if you're looking for the heaviest rainfall day, Saturday looks to be the soggiest, but there's still rain on Sunday. It's just more scattered, kind of lingers around. Maybe another heavy band develops late in the day on Sunday. So again, it comes at us in waves. Will it rain every second of the weekend? Probably not, but it will feel like it. It's going to rain a lot this weekend on and off. We go through Sunday. It continues to rain. Uh, we go into Monday morning. Still some lingering showers. They're becoming more scattered. The low looks like it's shifting more to the coast. In that, in that scenario, at least we're starting to wrap some drier air around the back side of it, which should begin to break it up. So I still think we'll see scattered showers on Monday, but they're much more scattered over time. And eventually this will move out as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday in the middle of the week. So how much rain are we talking about? Well, let's back this up real quickly. And I'm going to show you, this is actually the forecast amounts um, from, S, uh, from WPC. So you can see this going into Friday. This is Friday morning. Here comes the first little batches. So Friday might start dry, but as the day goes on, the rain moves in. We go into the afternoon, Saturday into Saturday night. That's Sunday. And let me move my head out of the way here quickly. We'll go all the way um, into early next week, Tuesday. You can see some of these totals around Charlotte now. You're seeing four, four and a half, five inches of rain. Again, that's going to fall over a three or four day period. But in the mountains and foothills, you're seeing some six, seven um, even some eight inch amounts. So that's some significant rainfall piling up in the mountains and foothills. So we're likely going to see some significant flash flooding in this setup. Now, if we go back here, I'm going to back this up real quickly and I'm going to show you um, some of the rainfall amounts that we're expecting as far as uh, flash flooding. So let me put on the uh, excessive rainfall. You could see down in Florida, obviously, today, tomorrow into Thursday. But by Friday and Saturday, we'll start to see that shift up to the north, and that's going to supply those really, really heavy rainfall amounts into the Carolinas. So for the Carolinas, the big story for us is going to be this rainfall. It's going to be all of this heavy rain moving in. Again, I don't expect severe weather, and I'm going to show you real quickly why I don't expect severe weather with this setup, because we're not going to see the warm air move in. So to see severe weather or tornadoes, we would have to get the warmer humid air from the south to move up here. And this is a thunderstorm fueler cape. So I'm gonna go through time. I'll go through Friday, Saturday. You see how there's really no thunderstorm fuel getting up into the Piedmont of the Carolinas, a little bit on the coast. Again, and this is Saturday after Saturday evening into Sunday. It's still, still loading. Let me back up and show you the older data. You can see just not a lot there. There is a front right here. That's the one area we'd have to watch, but it looks like any tornado threat would be well off to the southeast on the coast. So coastal Carolina and North Carolina, coastal South and North Carolina, you're going to have to watch for isolated tornadoes, but inland areas, it's not as big a threat. So there's the system. We'll back this up real quickly. Let me show you the currents here. I'll throw everything back on currently, and we'll kind of show you. Let me turn off all of the, the, the model data so you don't have to be messing with that. Turn all that off real quick. Um, there we go. So there's the system right now. You can see it. Let me turn that off. There it is, pushing to the north. We'll turn the tropical forecast back on real quickly. And you'll see there's the track and the forecast cone. That's where it's heading. It is going to cause a mess in Florida and then up in the Carolinas, a soggy weekend. We can hold the rain. I don't expect widespread issues, but as the weekend goes on, we might start to see flooding issues and maybe even a few trees come down because even though the winds aren't going to be high with this, 
we could see the ground loosen up and that wind eventually work over some of the trees. Of course, I will post more, more updates throughout the week. Another vlog coming up tonight. I will post updates on all my social media, so make sure you're following me there. Tell your friends to follow me as well. I'll keep you updated as we get through here.